the uh, the recording going so everybody else can uh, can listen in later. Uh, just a brief intro. If you haven't already heard Matt, he's been on the podcast oh only once now, but although we've done two podcasts, it was number nine, I want to say, where we talked about how to create a second brain. And your your favorite way of creating a second brain is in a tool called Wonderlist. Although you're very interested in how we do things in Trello, so I'm going <laughs> to sneak peeks to Trello sometime soon. And, um, and a big thing that got you into productivity, and it's actually a, a similar background to me, is, um, is, uh, is wanting to be a little bit more calm person. Uh, a little, you know, it's, it's easy to have a lot of ideas and thoughts and potential actions running around your, your, your mind, and, and, and one way of handling that is by writing them down and having a system to go uh, review those would, could, should, ought tos in the future. Um, and another way of doing that is to become more aware of your thoughts. And, uh, and, and that awareness comes from noticing. So on, on week one of our, uh, our Clean Slate group coaching, we had an awareness exercise. We talked about the different triggers that precede, uh, precede actions or, or potential actions. So um, I had everyone track those. Like, okay, maybe somebody asked you to do something. So you're like, okay, I, I can, I'll do that. I'll do that in the future, but how are you going to remember that? Well, a good way of doing that is writing it down. Or somebody sends you an email uh, asking you about an update on the project and you don't have time to respond to it right now. Well, how do you res- what do you do to respond to that? Well, that's another trigger for an action. Um, and, and I think what everyone found uh, with the, like one or two exceptions, some people just everything came in, in email, um, was there was more inboxes or more places where that work was coming in than we'd imagine. And, um, and I think one of the things that I've noticed about my mindfulness practice too is my mind is wandering more often than I would imagine. Um, and it, it, it takes uh, conscious effort to, to create some awareness to that. And Matt, um, we haven't talked about this subject directly, so I'm really excited to hear your, um, your thoughts and your, um, um, your sort of like how you found mindfulness as well as how you found productivity. Uh, so just to, to kick things off, um, how do you actually define mindfulness? The, well, firstly, thanks, Zach. Thanks very much for having me. And as I mentioned before we started this, I actually wish I was part of the Clean Slate program as well because I know you're doing some great stuff. So um, congratulations to all of you that are part of the Clean Slate program. It's, I've heard a lot about it and... Um, I'm sure you're getting a lot out of it. And obviously I'm extremely passionate about productivity. It's my life now. I run a business coaching and training people in productivity. So it's a great space to be playing in, but onto mindfulness. So what's, what's the link I guess to, for me, I've even forgotten the question, Zach, speaking of mindfulness, I know you just wanted my definition, <laughs> my definition of mindfulness definition. because we, start, we jumped straight into it there, didn't we? So my definition of mindfulness, the one that, I personally like the most is in, in my words and the simplistic version is self-awareness that that's my most simplistic version, but the actual definition, which I've come across in all my reading, which I, I think makes the most sense and I'll actually read it or I, or I will paraphrase it. So it comes from, I'm pretty sure this originally came from Judson Brewer and it's mindfulness is about the, and getting close and personal happening in our bodies and minds moment to moment, a willingness to turn towards our experience. And that's, that's the bit that I love it. It's, it's turning towards our experience as turning in, but turn towards what's happening in our mind and our body. So that's to me, that really simplifies it and makes it, makes it very clear actually, actually all about. And, and speaking of clarity, the, the mm-hmm. very first part when you were reading that definition got cut off due to, some technical things. Can you repeat? Okay. That? Yeah. So mindfulness is about being really interested and getting close and personal with what's happening. So it's about being interested. That's there's a couple of key points there: being interested and turning towards our experience. Great. Yeah. Great. And then uh, for those who are just listening to the audio, because this I'm gonna I'm planning on putting this on the podcast. The the birds in the background are part of Matt's beautiful backyard it is just gorgeous everyone here is super jealous 
Um, I don't know what. Uh, I hope some kookaburras come out because those things. Sound, <laughs> those things sound I got awesome. swooped. I got swooped by a bird about ten minutes ago, and it nearly hit me. I, it might happen again, so we'll see. <laughs> they're, only, have, they're only small birds. You'll have some deep, <laughs> deep awareness of that. That's that's really interesting how you say it's it's the curiosity. Uh, because I know um, a common a common thought when when it comes to meditation and in, in any sort of mindfulness practice is that you're you're just not having any thoughts or you're you're tamping those thoughts down and I've I've heard the same thing I uh, I got into mindfulness and and meditation actually with my mom uh, she she sent me a uh, a Deepak Chopra uh, 21 day guided meditation and and we did that together and. Um, and that, that sort of uh, got me kickstarted in, into the practice. And, and after that, I, I used guided meditations with, uh, with Headspace, that Headspace app. And he talks about that all the time when you are, uh, when a thought comes in, you shouldn't be like, gosh, dang it, why am I thinking about that again? It's more like, oh, interesting. That's there. <clears throat> and you, you just note it and then let it go. Uh, and then go back to the mantra, the breath, the whatever, uh, whatever focusing thought, uh, a body scan um, that that happens to be. So I've, that's that's interesting. That mindfulness is 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 actually just being curious about what's going on. Being curious, the inner work, workings. Being curious and being interested. Yeah. So how does it, how does that actually um, relate to productivity in any way? Because we're we're doing a little productivity boot camp. So how does being yeah. interested in the thoughts going on in your mind help you be more effective in the world? Yeah, so one of the biggest barriers to productivity from my view is distractions. Distractions. And and when we talk to people about productivity, we often externalize where those distractions are coming from. When, when I ask people what's, what's distracting you in, in the workplace or what's distracting you from getting work done, they often externalize. It's people, it's emails, it's the phone ringing, it's, it's all these things happening. Customers, <laughs> people often <laughs> say customers or clients, um, but we need those. And then eventually as we talk and we get a bit deeper and we take a few breaths and we slow down, they realize it's, it's the mind. So it's actually, that's, that's where a lot of the distraction comes from as well. Because if, if the mind was a bit calmer and a bit more focused on the task, someone could be having a conversation on the other side of the office and we really wouldn't be worried about it. But our mind is jumping from thing to thing. And, and so that's, that's one of the biggest links between mindfulness and productivity is if we can start to just have a bit more control over that mind. And this is what the meditation practices and the mindfulness practices are doing it's it's just it's like strengthening that muscle of the mind so we can get more focus so when we decide it's time to focus it's a bit easier for us because it's it's generally not easy as humans to focus or I, from personal experience it's not easy so this is training the that muscle of the mind so that's that's the link for me between definitely between mindfulness and, and then I, I, I swear, I think that bird is trying to, to, to test me with my, with my mindfulness as I'm listening to him or listening to the bird. Um, how, did you, how did you first come, um, come across this? Did, did you get into productivity first or did you get into mindfulness first or did they happen around the same time? Tell Definitely mindfulness. Story. In terms of my journey, I didn't actually get really into the theory of productivity until about three years ago. So I spent. 20 odd years working in the corporate world, struggling with productivity and not really going to the effort of getting better at productivity, always questioning and wondering. So during those 20 years, I got extremely stressed. I was struggling. I spent a lot of time focusing on managing the stress through yoga and meditation. And that was sort of where my mindfulness practice started was trying to manage stress. So I went along to my yoga class once a week or a meditation class once a week. But what I realized, what I realized now is that was all great and it still is great. And I still love all that and respect and do all that. But I was going back to the same crap at work that I was leaving behind when I was off to my yoga class <laughs> and I'd come back in a slightly calmer state the next day and I'd feel good in my body and my mind because I'd been to yoga or meditation, but all that, 
crap was still there. So once I realized with some better productivity tools, I could sort that crap out a bit better. Then the two started working together much, much better. I, I sort of think you, it's hard to have one without the other. Yeah. So my journey started in, in mindfulness and meditation, but in a sense, I wish it had started with productivity because it would have, it would have made it, the transition easier. Yeah. Yeah. When you, when you keep everything in your head, it's easy. It's easier to be a little bit more overwhelmed with it than if you have a system. Yeah. Where, okay. I've got all of my appointments in the calendar. I've got my email handled. Uh, um, that that's fascinating. I think my, my journey was, was almost identical. I, I started with fitness actually to deal with stress and then I went to mindfulness and then finally I found productivity. And that was, that was honest. That was the big key is, um, yeah. is, yeah. is getting, um, my, my world a little bit more structured, a little bit more organized, um, and a little bit more streamlined. So I knew that I could, uh, if I said I was going to do something, I'd either do it or I, when I, if I found I could not, I, I, I would have a reminder to be like, okay, let me go and renegotiate that. And I think that was the big thing that, uh, that caused me a lot of stress and, and a lot of anxieties. I just never knew if I was going to, uh, or what, what, you know, what was going to drop next? Like what promise am I going to break next? What, what thing did I say I was going to do that I, I'm not going to fall through, through with. And, and in just that, that constant state of, okay, I don't know. Like, you know, am, am I actually going to get away with it today or is, is something else going to fall through the cracks? Um, was, was definitely for me at the root of, uh, of a lot of the anxiety that, that I felt. And for me, it was a constant feeling of not getting everything done on my to-do list because before oh, yeah. I to get better at structuring, you, you, you have like the, the, the wish list or the, the list you can choose from and then you choose what am I working on now? And similar with me, with the second brain, I've got everything in the second brain, but I choose what's important for today. And I mean, it's normally a maximum of five things. Whereas before I got that simple process sorted out, I had a, a to-do list that was like two A4 pages long. And at the end of every day, I felt like a failure because I, hadn't, yeah. hadn't, I didn't think I'd done much. So this, was, this all links to mindfulness in the sense of how to think about your to-do list, how to think about your actions, and then this feeling of, self-love and acknowledgement of what you actually get done rather than what you haven't got done, which is a, which is a nice, just nice little self-love as well. I, I won't, yeah. I won't name names for sure, but there are, are a few people in the, in the clean slate group that are currently struggling with exactly that. They, um, they've, they've externalized their world and, and they've got it into their, their Trello boards or the sticky notes or whatever Kanban system that they're trying to create. And, um, and now it's like, well, how do I get it all done, Zach? And my answer is like, I don't think you can. <laughs> it doesn't seem yeah. very realistic. Um, I've got a few exercises and thoughts that I, I generally point people to um, since you've been through that. So that's, that's your experience with the stress with, with productivity. Mm -hmm. How would you suggest um, uh, what, what advice would you give to people that are feeling that right now? Keep, keep trying to fine tune or improve your list in terms of what time frame priorities. The first thing is just go through the things that you really can either delay or put, take off the list. Like I did this recently as well with a, a client who ended up with 147 actions in her to-do list. So, I mean, and she felt a bit overwhelmed and honestly I did too for her. I was like, I don't really know what to do here because <laughs> it was very overwhelming. This was real life. This was her job. And she, we, I spent time with her. We brainstormed, we did the brain dump. Um, what do you call the brain dump? You have another mind, brain, sweep. Uh, mind sweep. We did the yeah. mind sweep or the brain dump. Yeah. 147 things. And we were both a bit overwhelmed and that was the first thing to acknowledge, which you obviously have as well is, yeah, okay, this is actually overwhelming. It wasn't for me to say, don't worry about it. It was like, okay, at this very minute, this is overwhelming. So let's acknowledge that. And then it's a matter of going, what can we do to reduce that overwhelm? Going through the list. And this is, I love the Henry Ford quote where thinking is the hardest thing there is, which is the probable reason so few engage in it. So thinking is the hardest work. We're doers. We want to just start getting some things off that list. 
but we need to spend more time in the thinking process or the boss thinking, like in this boss knowledge mode, work, yeah. concept, the boss, boss worker would mode. You, so. Would you go into that boss mode versus worker mode briefly for people who haven't read uh, the, it's called The Productivity Ninja, right? Is yeah. The book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Productivity Ninja, great book by... How Dan to be. Alcott. How to be. And there we go. How to be. Ah, there we go. Got your plug Always. right there. Got your plug right there. <laughs> <laughs> for those listening, I thought you might have. Uh, yeah, it, it, a wonderful book. Just I have a, a memory like a, uh, a goldfish, so I, I sometimes forget things like that. Um, yes. Yeah, but there's, there's a great concept in there about um, boss mode versus versus worker mode. And if you can, with like yeah. two minutes, maybe uh, explain exactly what that is. Yeah, I can do it in even less than that, I think. Yeah. Start the clock. So basically when we're working, trying to get a job done, we have this voice that comes in our head, which will start talking at us, saying things like, why are you doing that task? There's, there's another hundred tasks on the list. So what about the meeting tomorrow that you haven't started preparing for? Or what about the report you haven't written? So that's our inner boss. Our inner boss comes in and starts talking to us. This is the challenge most of us face is this boss and worker is happening at the same time. So what's really important is we need to separate that and have boss time and worker time. And, and boss time for me is essentially planning or thinking time. And we need to do that so we can actually get on with the work in a more peaceful, structured, less stressful way. So, and, and it's definitely not a 50, 50 split for me, the boss time might be a maximum of two hours a week. And then the worker times all the rest. So, and the boss time could be five minutes at the start of each day. And it could be one or one and a half hours once a week to do the weekly reviews. So that's where the boss, boss sort of time comes in. So that's the, that's the concept there. So if you've got 147 things on your to-do list, it's really important to think I'm sitting down as the boss now. I'm still in boss mode. I'm not in worker mode yet. I'm still in boss mode and making those decisions on when things are due and the priority of things and really being very clear that as the boss, I'm, I'm managing this well and I can't ask my worker to get all this done today. So as the boss, it's just really making those, as the boss make the tough decisions and they're not really that tough. The tough bit is normally not making the decisions. The tough bits having the perseverance to stay in boss mode until you've done the job. Because we just yeah. want to get on and, oh, okay, there's one. I'll just get that email off and I can tick one off. No, stay, stay in boss mode. That's, that's actually, it's actually not hard to do. And the decisions are not normally hard, but it's just staying in that thinking. As Henry Ford says, thinking's the hardest thing there is. So, you know, staying in that boss mode. I hope yeah. that helps. Oh, that, that helps a lot. And actually just this morning, yeah. um, we're going to talk about a particular app that you use a little bit later my mom and I were, were getting started on a meditation using that app. And uh, my dad gave us a call and I'm, I'm back home in Denver, Colorado to, because I'm, I'm now an uncle. Uh, my, my brother had a, a little baby, Ethan. So got to see awesome. him every day. And, and my dad's consulting at this hospital and he was talking about exactly that. He was the director of nurses, I, I believe was, um, uh, was is just overwhelmed a lot, and uh, and she's like, oh, I gotta do this, gotta do this, gotta do this, and he's he's essentially being her boss for boss mode. It's like, this is your priority yeah. right now. Um, this person is is always coming to you with questions. Go hang out with that person. Yeah, yeah. give them. Yeah, let that person talk to this person. Like, yeah, you you here's here's how you you do it. And he's because he's been doing this for so long, he knows how to like break down individual tasks for people in the hospital and be like. This is what you got to be focusing on right now. Ignore all, all the rest of that garbage. Uh, but it's really hard to do um, sometimes because uh, other people's emergencies, uh, if, if you let them, it's very easy to become your emergency too. Yep, absolutely. All right. So you got to be a boss. You got to, any, any other um, suggestions for, for those people with the, um, you know, I, I think 160 was the record for the mind sweep brain, right. Dump, uh, right. <laughs> mind dump, um, for our group wow. this time around. Um, actually so that's we, a record for me as well. So congratulations. That's yeah, our, yeah, that's our what, global record. There good job, Mike. <laughs> He's actually kind of proud of it. <laughs> so I could call him out. Um, so you got that in, in, in you, you just got to sit down and, and, and think that out. Do you have any, 
structures or, or guidelines besides, okay, don't run off and start doing the to-dos because that's, that's an easy thing to, to want to do. Um, do you have any other structures when it comes to being a better boss for yourself um, and, and pulling in work that you can reasonably get done in the day, in the week, in the quarter? The simplest structure, the most powerful thing that, that I do is choosing those five things for the day. So you just in, limit it to in five. terms of a structure, limit it to five things for the day. And obviously if you get those five things done, you just, you can choose more. <laughs> like it's, a, it's not, it, some people go, but I, I, I've got more than that. I want to do 10. I'm like, okay, but start with the first five and get those done and feel good about that. It's all about this feeling of satisfaction. So, I mean, that's, that's not so much a process into how to choose the five because how to choose those five out of 160 is quite challenging because I would actually say you're not trying to choose five out of 160. You need to spend more time getting that 160 chunked down. So you might be choosing five out of 30 or five out of 40 that you've, you've identified as the most important um, because choosing five out of 160 is too hard. Yeah. So to chunk that down. day to day for sure. Yeah. So to chunk down that 160, the first thing is look at what you can just take off that you don't need to do. Look at what you've got in there that's not really an action for you and you can just put in a reference. Some things are more like reference than actions. Put them in a reference area. Then look at time frame. What can you already, you might be able to split that list in half quite easily and go half of it I can do next week, no problem. Mm -hmm. And then you've just got it in half already and start chunking it down like that. And, and uh, most of the people in this group are, are entrepreneurial in some way. Um, so d delegating yeah. is, a, is a very viable option. Um, so yes. figuring out what, what work uh, you can get off your own plate. I, Jorge has been doing a really yeah. good job with that. He's, he's on the call right now. Um, and it, he, a part of his, his overwhelm is I, I, that he was feeling before and I think we're doing good now with it, but, but Jorge can, <laughs> can speak up if he needs to, is I think all the, all the employees that he have, you've got about 12 people that were under you, um, it almost felt like it was his, his job uh, to, yeah. to keep track of all their tasks. And when he realized, oh, well, no, I, I oversee their work, but I don't actually do or keep track of their work for them, I think that was a big aha uh -huh, in, in, in structuring that in a way where he can mm -hmm. review but not necessarily be held accountable for all of their all of the tasks that he's he's delegated was was yeah. was very good. All right, we're talking about mindfulness. We both mindfulness. Like, we like both productivity, so we we let that slip. Mindfulness. <laughs> but but let's pull it back with. Um, I I don't know. A lot of people kind of get into um, uh, for you know, listen to a podcast or read a blog article or watch some Oprah, and they're like, oh, I'm gonna meditate. Um, but then they sit down and. It, it it's weird. They're not sure if the pillow's right. They're thinking a lot, and um, and it, it it doesn't quite quite click for them. And maybe after two or three times, they uh, they they're like, okay, well, I gave that a try. Maybe I'll I'll try working out harder next time. Um, what was your aha moment or, or light bulb moment when it came to meditation? Did it come quickly? Did it did it take you a little while? I'll start by saying it's still not easy <laughs> i'm not sure if it ever gets easy um, but it does get but however it is enjoyable it is it, it is enjoyable but it's not always easy my my aha moment came after years of trying to meditate and and i spent two years in my early early 30s or late 20s or early 30s i spent some which was 12 years ago 13 years ago i spent two years intensely studying yoga and meditation in an ashram um, near Sydney. I was still working, but I was going there most weekends. I was doing two and three week retreats and I was doing daily practices and it was very, very intense. And it, like one hour meditations every day, along with yoga and, and physical practices to go with that. And I, but I still always struggled. I was still always trying to get it right. And I was still always thinking, my mind's still wandering. Like, why can't I just sit and focus on my breath for an hour and, and love it without my wandering mind? So I was always struggling. It was always actually, I was still enjoying it and I was getting benefits and I was having insight in the meditations, which I wouldn't have had 
if I wasn't meditating, the insight about my life and insights about my preferences and just insights about life and about me. But my light bulb moment, and this is so simple. My light bulb moment was when I heard someone say, and I don't even remember who it was, if when your mind is wandering and you bring it back, that's the practice. And that's it. So, the, and it, it is building that muscle. So every time in, in meditation now, when my mind wanders and I bring it back, it's almost like a little, I get a, a good feeling inside because it's like, mm. ah, that's it. That's the practice. I'm strengthening the muscle. I've, yeah, I've heard it framed it. as reps. Yeah. So each time you bring it yeah. back, that's a rep. That's a rep. That's a rep. Yeah. So uh, rather yeah. than feeling like, ah, oh, gosh, it did it again. Like, <laughs> yeah, I failed again. That's it. great. That is, uh, it's, a, it's a total reframe, I think, for, for mm. most people who've maybe heard just a little bit about meditation and, and are, are interested in it. Um, mm. That's that's great. I, I hope that aha moment helps helps folks who are listening. When um, yeah. so you you really got got kind of hot and heavy into um, into the to the world. Are you still uh, meditating for an hour a day and going to lots of retreats, or what does it look like for you now? No, Your no, backyard I, seems like a Zen moment. <laughs> <so it, laughs> when I garden, when yeah. I do the gardening, um, it is a bit like a meditation. No, but, Honestly, my meditation practice now is, is embarrassingly simple. It's normally 10 minutes a day using an app like Calm and doing a 10-minute body scan. Um, it's, it's very simple. I, I f and, and my yoga practice is also quite short. It might be 10 or 15 minutes of, of more just like stretches a day. So these days I actually have like a very simple, unstructured practice, but I, I do do it regularly. But I find you doing the body scan using calm. What I do, that tends to get me into a state of peace and, and centeredness. And then I normally sit for a few minutes um, in quiet after that, just with normally with focus on my breath. So this is, this is the interesting thing with meditation. There's so many different styles and I've tried a lot of them. And 10, 15 years ago, I was deeply, deeply structured with it all. And these days it is more... I think I've got more of a real world approach. I don't try and get too full on with it at all. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my general practice, but it is the 10 minute body scan with calm each day and followed by normally a few minutes of just sitting quietly this morning, for example, I went to the beach and I didn't officially meditate, but I sat on a seat. The sun was there and I sat with my eyes closed for a few minutes and just focused on my breath. And because the beach is quite close, so I could just sit on the beach for a few minutes. And that was, that was my meditation this morning. So I didn't even do the calm this morning because we had this call coming up and it started at 8am. So it was a bit of a day to get things going. Yeah. I want to recommend, I want to recommend a podcast by Dan Harris, 10% happier. When we, so 10%, this is the book, which I've only actually just started reading, but his Dan Harris, which you probably all know because he's quite famous in America, I think, the, the newsreader. He has a podcast about called 10% Happier. And it's basically about meditation. But what I like about that is they have these kind of conversations, which is he says to people, what do you actually do? When you sit down, what do you think? What do you do? And he's really good at getting people to that specific state rather than a lot of people, yeah, I meditate for an hour a day and it's wonderful, but no one ever says what they actually do. So that's what I like about his podcast. It's almost like he gets, he breaks into their head and says, well, tell us actually what you do. So yeah, if anyone wants to go to that sort of next stage, that's quite a good podcast to listen to. That's perfect. That's perfect. It, it begets a follow-up question. What do you actually do? And I feel like that's what I always try to do when it comes to uh, interviewing people about different productivity systems is like, yeah. it, well, how'd you do that? Well, but like, yeah. how? But, yeah. and, and it's those details that, that were a lot of the, like, oh, that's not so hard. Or I could do that myself. Like when we, yeah. when we got a little bit into boss mode, like, well, how do you specifically do that? It, it, it's, it's, yeah. That tends to be a lot more helpful. So good, mm. good recommendation um, there. And uh, for people like with, that want to just maybe even practice uh, something I've heard is count 10 breaths. You can do that five yeah. times if you want. 
Um, and that should probably take you two, three minutes. Um, yeah. And believe you me, like if you can get to the end of 10 breaths without your mind wandering, without getting one of those reps, uh, you might have problems. I don't know. <laughs> it's it's yeah. just not very common. Um, but it's just, it, you don't need to complicate it. You don't necessarily need an app. Although I think apps are good. Uh, I always thought of them as training wheels, but it's good to know that somebody who has lots of experience in meditation still uses them. Um, I mentioned Headspace, Calm's another one, and one I've, I've used recently is called um, Insight Timer, uh, which, yeah. which has both guided and just timed meditations where you can do whatever you want. So you can say a mantra over and over mm. again. Uh, recently, I, I read a book uh, that had a, a mantra that you could, put the meditation in, um, about saying like, Oh, okay, I could, I could use this. You know, if you, if you hear a good saying that you want to think of, um, to, to think of yourself as more grateful or more abundant or noticing more of the, uh, the good things that are happening in life versus the stresses and the annoyances. Um, yeah, well, that's perfect, Matt. The other, the other practices Zach that I didn't mention, which, it really is just, a, it's very natural for me. I focused on breathing. So you mentioned, you know, counting the breaths. So the, the pranayama or the, the breathing practices that come with yoga, I, I do them subconsciously half when I'm, often when I'm meditating or trying to get to sleep. Or, and they are practices like balancing your in-breath and your out-breath. So count in, in for four, out for four, in for four, out for four, like these kind of practices and just counting the breath is a great way to start to calm the mind as well. Just being, being breath awareness, which you already mentioned in terms of five in, five out, or you know, something, but actually counting them, the length of it's a good, good practice as well. It really calms you down. And you notice how short your breath sometimes is. You start doing the in for four, out for four, and it's quite difficult when you first start. And you think, I must have been breathing like this. But after a couple of minutes, you can do it. And it, it really calms the whole body down and gets your mind, therefore calms the mind as well. And I just want to go back to, you said, you know, for someone with so much meditation experience and I, I do have a lot of meditation experience, but I still honestly see myself as a beginner <laughs> and that's just my journey. I guess it's where I'm at. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've got one more question in there. I can see if um, if my mom uh, or Jorge or Doris have anything else they want to yeah. ask or Great. add um, as far as experience goes. Uh, so right now, you're doing a, a quick 10 minutes as well as a little bit of, of yoga and stretching when, when it comes to your mindfulness um, moments. You... Um, you like the body scan, which I'm actually, that's, that's my preferred method too, where you, um, you note the different parts of your body. I, the one I'm a big fan of is, is uh, a, a guided one that I got four or five years ago where it's, it's like you, he breaks a yoke on your head and you just like imagine it all going down the different parts of your body or having sunlight fill your body up with this golden juice or something. <laughs> it's, it's an interesting one. But like, I, noting I myself. Knowing your already. physical body is, is I noticed is, is a little bit more helpful for me uh, mm. and, and, and will attract my attention more than, uh, than just the breath or just saying a, a same word over and over again, or a quick mm. saying over and over again. Um, so those are the, the specifics. Um, but as far as benefits go, what are the benefits you're getting from it now? And are you getting more or less benefits from it now that you're putting less time into the, your practice? The main benefits, there's a physical and a mental benefit for me. The physical benefit is just checking with my body, getting it, trying to see where there's tension, feeling where there's tension so I can maybe focus on that a bit during the day if I do some stretching or some exercise or some sport. So there's a physical benefit. It's just taking that time and to check in with my body. The mental benefit is really just having a moment of peace like it's i am normal in terms of during the day my mind is going and non-stop it's very very hard to just slow it down so it's it's that moment when you are just focusing on the breath and there's peace so it just feels good it's like it's it's a little holiday <laughs> during the day and so and there's all the physical benefits that come along with that 
managing your, balancing your hormones, um, detoxification, um, rewiring the brain. We haven't even talked about neuroplasticity and how you can actually change the structure of your brain through meditation and the neural pathways and all that neuroscience in there as well, which might be for another day. But I mean, that London, London taxi drivers who have to learn all the streets in London have a thicker, I can't remember the exact term, but the, the hippocampus, they have a thicker hippocampus, that's it, than people that don't do the same level of study. And, and this just shows how they can, we can change our brain. So and that's a study I was reading the other day. So, um, yeah, there's all these benefits. For, for me, one of the huge benefits, and hearing you describe the sunlight and the yolk, I get to just get that feeling of, ah, oh, it's just, it's, it's, it cannot be all very spiritual and all very heavy, but it's really just a little gift. It's like getting in a warm bath or something. It just feels good. Yeah. I, I love that so much because I hadn't heard it put that way. I, I, I think the, the areas that I'm leading are maybe come from Silicon Valley and people are talking about like, oh, I'll make you be able, be able to focus better and you're going to make better decisions. Yeah. And the, uh, the gray matter on the frontal cortex of your brain is going to get thicker, uh, which I, they have studied mon uh, yeah. Buddhist monks who've been meditating for over an hour a, a day for 20, 30 years, and they do have more gray matter. Uh, like yeah. physically thicker gray matter, just like those cavities you described have a bigger hippocampus, yeah. which is a part of the brain responsible for navigation. The reason I know that word yeah. is because I've got a hippocampus the size of a pea. Like I could get lost anywhere. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, yeah, which, w whatever you use grows, whatever you don't use, you lose. Um, so yeah. the same comes for, for, um, for your focus and for your calm. But like if the benefit is doing it itself, uh, you must be like one of those weirdos that likes to exercise too. So <laughs> it's, it's not everyone like feels that, that wonderful sensation during it, but it's, it's nice to know that that's, that's an option that that's, that's a benefit that you after time um, could feel. Well, yeah, think of it as a gift rather than as a, as a task. It's a gift yeah. to give. Yourself. That's, really that's what I, I feel like a lot of people, I, I was going to get into questions on it, on how do you put it into your day like where it seems like morning is, is kind of the obvious piece for it, but sometimes it might be good for, for the evening and, and how, like, mm. are there ways where if, if you could set reminders to do it? Um, but, uh, it seems like you're at the point where it doesn't feel like another to do, to do. It just feels like, uh, a good thing. Like, you know, people who have ducks, Oh, I get to walk. I get to walk Gus. Awesome. This is going to yeah. be pleasant. Yeah. Versus, versus like, ah, oh, man. But I also look for smaller opportunities throughout the day just to check in. And my office is on the 34th floor, so the elevator takes a couple of minutes, especially if I get an all-stops elevator because everyone gets in there with me. It might take them two minutes to get there. So I just stand at the back and close my eyes and focus on my breathing for that, that ride. And that's, so that's what I look for as well, just little moments. Whereas in the past, you look around, everyone else is looking at their phone or just look, watching the numbers on the screen. I just close my eyes and, and focus on my breath. So I look for those little, those little opportunities throughout the day as well, just to try to quieten this busy head down. Perfect. Perfect. So little yeah. micro opportunities versus trying to, yeah. trying to go, go do a three hour session. I don't, I've, yeah. I don't think I've ever done a one hour meditation session. That <laughs> might kill me. <laughs> uh, uh, well, I th okay. Thank you so much. We, we said we we're going to keep this to 30 minutes. We've already gone a little bit over. I want to see if um, uh, Bob or Julie, uh, Jorge, Doris, or Stasia have any comments or, or questions they want to add, and then we'll we'll thank you and, and, and say say goodbye. And you guys are all muted right now, so feel free to unmute yourself if you want to chime in. So Zachary, it's hey, Doris. Doris. Hey, how are you? I've, I've enjoyed listening. Um, I was thinking about what I do to calm me down and to just re kind of recenter me. And, um, you know, just as a Christian, I have learned over the years to, you know, I have a certain routine. I don't get to do it every, you know, I'm not going to say I, I'm doing it every day, but I can feel it when I don't do it, but when I, I wake up and I have my, what I call, quote unquote, my quiet time, where I'm kind of in prayer and meditation, but my focus is not 
so much on my breathing, which I know that's really good too. And I, I, I may incorporate that a little bit more, but my focus is on, um, on God, on the, on my father and his mm. love for me. And, um, and then I, I may pray, I'll read a scripture, you know, I may just uh, sit in what I call soak. And I'm soaking, but instead of focusing on my breathing, I'm really focusing on his love for me and uh, just his awesomeness and his goodness, you know, towards me. And it's really, it brings a lot of peace and calm into my life. And it helps me, it like unscrambles, you know, things. And when I do get back to my desk, it's easier for me to like prioritize things, to, mm. um, you know, just it, it helps me um, because I'm approaching everything from with not from like an anxious uh, place. It, it, you know, brings me to that place of tranquility and peace. So an order kind of in my head where I can um, make better decisions about and prioritize what I am going to do for the day. You know, it, you know, it fills me with joy. And then I just like fill my cup. So that when I'm with my around other people or when I'm with my uh, client or whatever, I'm just with someone, I'm better. I have, I'm not on empty. I have, you know, I have enough for me and to, to give out. I, I like what you said there too. It, it, you're in a different state, the state after, and, and I can imagine Matt, you feel the same way. The state after a, um, some sort of mindfulness, um, you're 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 a better you <laughs> you're not the angry you you're not the stressed you you're not the didn't get a good night yes, you. yes. you're the better you and and that's yes. uh, you know we've been talking about it from a secular point of view uh but you're right I, it, meditation is nothing new and in all the major religions um yes. abrahamic or buddhist or or uh what was the, the one we we're talking about the other day month one from india like they all have mindfulness meditations um <clears throat> yeah oh, hindi hindu um, and, and so it's, it's nothing new. So it's, it's obviously been something that humans have found useful for, for the millennia. Um, and it's how, and, it's, it's how we learn. <laughs> it's one way to learn. It's one, one way to get insight. And I love the analogy, Doris, of filling your cup. I think that's really yeah. a great way to think of it. Yeah. 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 Oh, cool. Does anyone else have anything to, to add or any, any other thoughts that they want to want to throw out there before we, uh, we say goodbye to Matt's beautiful backyard? I would like to say that uh, I, I enjoy the idea of uh, boys mode. Uh, yeah. I think I can, I can really use that uh, even uh, and uh, as I'm uh, I'm setting my boards on the clean slate uh, course. I'm uh, seeing my work more as uh, more, uh, the important I need to do with uh, review and planning. Yeah. And I really miss that uh, because I was not delegating what I need to delegate. I was setting the tasks as I as they, they, the tasks are my own. So yes. I think if I set um, like one or two hours a day to work as a, in the boss mode, I can really uh, take advantage of that. And about uh, um, uh, meditation, I already tried a few times, but uh, I think I can uh, go in a like a deeper state but uh, after I meditate like uh, half an hour after the meditation I, I don't know I, I have the, this feeling I lost the, the calm state of my mind hmm. I mean it's just doing more rest yeah <laughs> yeah that's and it. During the day, I don't know if it, I like I meditate uh, ten minutes in the morning, and uh, two hours of the evening, I don't I don't know if it uh, reflects until the, this time. 
Well, like Dan Harris's podcast and book, it's, it's only 10%. It's not much. Yeah. It's just a little bit. <laughs> That's right. It's not going to give you everything. <laughs> That's um, right. And it, good, really good point, Jorge, when, when you're talking about boss mode, we were, we were discussing it um, as like being outside and sli- slightly elevated. Um, and, and it sounded like even with Doris talking about her, her prayer, she's able to get outside and, and slightly elevated with her life. So she's got a better perspective about things. And that's what mm. planning allows you to do. That's what contemplative exercises allow you to do is to just get above the fray. It sounds like that, that might be, um, another, another, like there's, I, I wrote an article one time on a meditation. It ended up being like 2,600 words. And it was like, here's this benefit. Here's this benefit. Here's this. Benefit. It's just like, this is kind of a cure all, isn't it? Um, but you know, like if you, if you, there's a few things that just seem to work, um, exercise, sleep, and mindfulness might be on that list too. So. Keep it simple. Yeah, yeah. Keep it simple. Really. Yeah. Well, great. Cool. I like that. Um, mom, you keeping quiet? <laughs> You're the one who got me into meditation. <laughs> you hear me? I hear. I, yes, I think. You. Yeah. Huh? Okay. Um, well, I think you kind of need to separate mindfulness and meditation a little more. Hmm. That mindful is is being aware of that moment in time and not judging it. So by mindfulness, you, you are using, you know, a different part of your brain, I really think, than you would yeah. during meditation. And a lot, like what she's saying it with her prayer, be, be, becoming more aware makes you, can lead to more gratefulness mm-hmm. or, um, compassion about things around you because you're aware of what's happening with them and then meditation i mean they they both you know are a lot of of, um, bring good results but they're a little bit different in their practice and so you could really add being mindful every day or you should be adding that along with being meditative in yeah. whatever manner and prayer certainly is a meditate a form of meditation yeah w- would you say meditation is a practice that will lead to greater mindfulness yes i think for you to yeah. well yeah i think you need that for you to be the calming before it and then when you're talking about breathing exercise and he says how you can just do it in the elevator um <laughs> if people would do it more at red lights or in traffic <laughs> it would be like so good for road rage. <laughs> it's like I am going to work. How many breaths, uh, you know, for this red light, or before yeah. I can make this left turn? And you know, and it is true with your counting. If you if you can't remember what breath you're on, you always go back to one. Yeah. <laughs> so make sure you do that because I don't think I've ever reached ten <laughs> without losing count. That's true. There's a practice that I was taught in, which you start at 27. And the reason you start at 27 is because it's one quarter of 108. And 108 is this magical spiritual number, supposedly. So I don't know why 27, but that was the number. So we start at 27 and it's like, I'm breathing in 27. I'm breathing out 27. I'm breathing in 26. I'm breathing out 26. And you try and get to one. And I don't think I've ever got there either. I, get, I might get to 23 or 22 and, and you start at 27 again. So that's exactly the same practice but mm-hmm. for some reason, starting at 27. I love so. that micro practice. Tom. I'm <laughs> going to start doing that. As, as somebody who drives yeah. a scooter in a major city, you can really see so many people are just sitting on their phones at stoplights. And so they're oh, yeah. automatically getting distracted and then they're trying to navigate a, a two ton machine that, can kill people yeah. uh as yeah. a, good, a good way of going about things well cool no that that's great julie and i love i love the way you're talking about separating mindfulness and meditation because mindfulness can be a practice that we can do throughout the day without sitting and having our eyes closed mindfulness yes. is this turning towards our experience that curiosity that we started talking about um and that's how it all links to productivity as well is being curious and self-aware around what what's distracting us what's the mind doing what's making us feel good what's what's giving us energy what's draining us of energy this these are all sort of 
mindfulness related questions that I like to touch on as well. So yeah, mindfulness and meditation, they are definitely different, but yeah. And related. And then, yeah. and you just said it too, like it, it, it gives you more awareness and with more awareness, it's like you're, the blinders are off. You've got more choices. Yeah. You can be more aware of, Oh, maybe that person could use some help or maybe this is an opportunity for something in business, or maybe this is, um, uh, something that I can see somebody struggling with that I can, I can intervene and, 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 and be helpful. So it's like when it, when it comes to the clean slate program and the Kanban, that's something I'm say over and over and over again, when you have awareness, you have choice, uh, choice yeah. to pull in the right work at the right time. Um, but if you can navigate your life with a greater sense of awareness of, of the opportunities and the pitfalls around you, um, things are going to probably work out a little better. Okay. Perfect. Well, I'm going to have some awareness of the time since we're, we've almost doubled it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and wrap things up here. Thank you so much, um, uh, Doris and Jorge and, and Mom for, for your, your comments. And, and Matt, thank you very much for coming in. And, and really, th this was all you. It was, it was your idea, and, and you really structured the, the conversation in a way that uh, it, it was useful for me. So hopefully it's useful for um, everyone out there who's either watching the recording of this or um, on, the, on this call right now. So thanks, Matt. Thank you for the opportunity, and it's lovely to... I feel like my cup is filled just spending some time with you all this morning. It is only morning in Sydney, so I'm about to start my day. So thank you, everyone, for filling my cup. And thanks, Zach, for the opportunity. Absolutely. Take care, everyone. I'll, I'll see right. most of you this coming Friday. Good luck with the clean slate. <laughs> all right. Bye for Absolutely. now. Bye. Take care. Bye.